Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is the release date for Spellbinders collaboration with House Mouse for the winter collection. We have four different stamps here and Spellbinders was kind enough to send them to me to create with and share with you. So I'm going to use the Candy Hearts stamp today. Throughout this week I'm going to do a project with each one of those stamps so stay tuned for those videos. I'm going to use my Misty stamping tool and I'm going to stamp on some hammer mill cardstock with black stays on ink. Now, typically when I color images, I tend to go between using Copics or using my watercolor. Those are my two favorite ways to color. However, for this one, I'm going to use some Posca paint pens. They're a quick and easy way to color an image. And when you use a stamping tool with it, even though when you color over the image, you lose some of that detail, you can get some of that detail back later. And I'll show you that in a bit. So I have a set of Posca pens here and they are pastel colors, which is perfect for these candy hearts. I don't have a brown one for a mouse or for the mouse, but I do have a silver one. So I'm going to be doing the mouse silver. I don't uh, want to wait for to get new markers in. So I'm going to make do with what I have. So these Posca pens are an acrylic paint pen. They make it super quick and easy to color. I do color fairly quickly because I don't want the paper to start pilling. And I do, um, or I have noticed in the past, if I take my time and go over the section while it's still moist, the paper will start to pill. So I am fairly quick with my coloring. Now these are opaque so they are going to cover the black stays on stamp lines but as I already said we're going to get those back later. The other thing is they dry a nice matte so I thought for these uh, love heart candies they'd be perfect. The pastel colors are perfect and the matte finish is perfect. So I chose five different colors for the candies and I'm going to color them so that I don't have the same color candy beside each other so I'll do a little bit of a scattered um, coloring as I'm going through them and you can see how quick and easy it is to color these because they're just an acrylic paint pen you don't really uh, shade or highlight them they're just one flat color so it makes it a little bit quicker and easier for coloring because you're not doing the shading and highlighting but that is a little bit more of a flat image now as you just saw here I shook the pen I was running out of ink a little bit there's a little ball inside the pen and when you shake it you can hear it it mixes up the paint and then I press it onto some scrap paper that pumps that um, paint into the tip of the pen. So if you find that yours are getting a little bit dry and you shake it, pump it onto some or tap it onto some scrap paper and often you'll get some more paint coming into your marker. It's been a few months since I've used these markers so sometimes when they're sitting the tips tends to start drying out a little bit. Really easy fix. The only time that that wouldn't work is if you've used up all the paint in the paint pen. Another option for coloring these images is using chalks. It would be a perfect way to get the chalky finish on the little love hearts as well. I opted to go for this because I haven't done it in a while and I like to change up what I'm doing. And it's just such a really quick and easy way to get a nice, fun and vibrant image. When I'm coloring these areas, I'm careful to go up to the line, but not go over the line. There's not really an easy way to fix it if you overcolor. I do have a white Posca pen and I could wait for the Posca color to dry and then go over it with the white pen, but it doesn't completely hide it. So best to try to avoid it. So I'm using this pink one. I'm going to use it for a couple of the love hearts. And then I'm also going to use it for the nose and the hands, feet and the tail of the mouse, as well as the little bit of the ears. In order to create a bit of a softer blend between the silver and the pink on the mouse, I'm going to use a detailed blending brush and I'm going to color a little bit and I'm going to pounce it up and down. I'm also going to use this silver underneath that pile of candy hearts for the shadow. The silver does have a metallic finish to it, so it's not flat just like the regular Posca, mar Posca markers. Once again, I didn't want to wait for new markers to come in this time of year. Probably would have taken a couple of weeks and I didn't want to wait for that. So I'm making do again with what I have, but I like the finish at the end. I like how it has a bit of a different finish from the candies. I'm doing about an inch, inch and a half section, and then I'm taking that detailed blending brush, pouncing it up and down just to soften that line a bit, blend it out just a tiny little bit. After this, I do go and I wash my brushes out. I don't let the um, acrylic paint dry on there completely. Acrylic paint is pretty much permanent once it's dry, but if you wash it while it's still wet, it's pretty easy to get out. So I use a little bit of hand soap and then just run it under the tap and it came out really, really quickly. 
using that silver not only on the shadow for the candy hearts but I'm using it over top of the mouse and I'm pretty much just coloring him solid other than I will do a little bit of the pouncing with the blender pen or with the detailed ink brush on the face and a little bit around his body just to kind of give him a softer look with the fur because these markers are opaque, if I didn't use that blending brush, I'd have really a harsh line between the silver and the pink. I've also done it with my fingers just tapping up and down, but because this blender brush is a lot smaller, I have a lot more control over that detail. And because this image is somewhat detailed, I wanted to have that control. For the rest of the hands and the feet and the tail, there's not really any blending. I'm just doing some straight coloring. This, these markers have a bit of a bullet tip to them, so it was harder to get that detail in the t end of the tail. So I just went back with the markers that I had used on the candies beside it and colored over top of that. Once that marker is dry, it's really easy to color over top of it without having your paper start to pill. I did want to wait until it's dry to avoid that. I'm going back and forth with the pink and with the silver and using that detailed brush to just... Um, soften those lines get a little bit of the fur looking kind of fuzzy as well as blend between the silver and the pink once that image is completely colored there's not really much time to wait until it's totally dry in order to re-stamp over top of it these markers dry fairly quickly like i want to say probably within about 30 seconds. So you don't really have to wait too long. So I put that piece of cardstock back in my Misty stamping tool, inked it with the black stays on again, and then stamped over top of it. And this is why I use the stays on for it. Stays on is good for permanent ink as well as going over top of acrylic paint. It's gonna be nice and permanent there. I'm taking a little bit of glossy accents and putting it on top of his eye, just to give him a, the look of a beady eye. I love these mice with a little bit of a bleedy eye, beady eye. And there's these brushes after I washed them. They came completely clear or completely clean, perfect for using for another project and ready to go for that. I have my card base here. I cut a piece of purple that coordinated. I cut it at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then my image is at four inches by five and a quarter. So I just have an eighth of an inch mat around it. It's just enough to tie the whole image together. For this particular card, I chose not to use any of the sentiments in the set. There is one that says Happy Valentine's Day and there's one that says I love you. I figured I'd wait until I actually went to use the card and then put a sentiment inside of it. But you could easily add a sentiment to the inside or even put one, say, in on the front of the card. But I like it without the sentiment there. I love how opaque and matte and vibrant these colors are. Perfect for this image and you can see how quickly it came together. This is a great way to color an image if you're new to it and don't really wanna mess with highlighting and shading. You can just do some flat coloring. Super easy to get those details back with that Misty stamping tool. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow using one of the other stamps from the collection and I really appreciate you being here.